Right, okay, now I've been asked um, a couple of times, well more than a couple of times, about the palettes I use for watercolour. And what I'm going to do now is go through the way my palettes have developed over the years. Um, first of all, we've got the most important one that I use more often than any other. Um, and this is the basic Ron Ransom palette. It's on a plastic tray, so it makes big washes. Ron Ranson always used the same colours and he always used um, Cotman by Winsor & Newton. They're student quality paints but they are the best student, well, about the best student quality paints you can get so I don't contradict myself later on. Now the way I do it when Ron painted, he used to put new paint out every time. He was a lot richer than me. Um, so when I paint, I let them dry out and then I just give them a squirt with... and I let that soggy out and then it reactivates the paint. Now, OK. The paints that we've got are basic Ron Ransom ones Lemon Yellow, Ultramarine Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Raw Sienna, Light Red, Burnt Umber, Paint Grey. Okay, now that is the basic Ron Ranson palette. Over the years, I've come, because I'm nowhere near as good as him, I've come to add Lemon Yellow, um, Cadmium Yellow for when I want a little bit brighter green. And also, under the influence of Charles Evans, I've added Hooker's Green there. Um, that is um, Cotman, the same as the others. That um, they don't make in... Yes, they do. That's Cotman as well. It, I'm talking rubbish. Right, OK, that's that one. That's the Ron Ransom palette. Put that to one side and if you hear a loud clattering noise that's because all the stack of palettes has fallen over. This one is my Charles Evans palette. Nowhere near as manky as his. I do clean mine occasionally. Um, this is very similar in a lot of ways. Um, Charles Evans, I would advise anybody who watch his videos, he's really, really good. He's, um, he's not as loose as Ron Ranson, but he has got such a no-nonsense style about him. He's such a refreshing person to watch. Right, OK. His is slightly different. Again, it's nearly always... Um, ultramarine blue that he uses but sometimes he will use cobalt instead um, for he does a lot of boat painting and very often he puts that in for painted things if you're doing blue doorways and things a lot of French scenes that I do I use that for the shutters and things he uses um, yellow ochre rather than raw sienna because it's thicker and it's slightly more yellow it's safe by using yellow ochre he doesn't have to use a basic primary yellow he uses that for mixing his trees and stuff like that the reason he can get away with that is because he uses hooker's green um dark hooker's green you should never ever use if you're you know, on its own. It's a wonderful mixing green, but if you use it straight from the tube, it just doesn't exist. It's very skyry green. Okay, so that's Hooker's Green. Um, I'll come to that one afterwards because I've added that myself. Uh, we've got Light Red, which is the same as Ron Ranson. We've got um, Alizarin Crimson, which is the same. 
Um, this time we've got um, Raw Sienna, which isn't in the Ron Ransom palette, and we've got Burnt Umber as opposed to Raw Umber on the Charles, Gre uh, Charles Evans one. Charles Evans himself dev devised a colour called Charles Evans Sand, which I don't use, but I use an SAA professional um, paint called Sandstone, which has pretty much the same effect. I've also added another colour to it um, because... Hooker's Green, I find sometimes, because I'm not as good as Charlie, um, I find it difficult to, to use sometimes. So I've added, uh, what that is, is a neutral tint, green shade. Now mixing that with a bit of the Hooker's, I can get it more, I can use it more the way he does. But that is not a shortcoming of the palette, it's my shortcoming. Charlie uses Aquafine paints by Dale Rowney, which are Dale Rowney's equivalent of the Cotman. They're top range students, students quality paints. Now, there is an argument that they are slightly better quality because in some of their paints they've got natural pigments, they've got real pigment um, but then I think so of um, Winsor & Newton in, in, in their ranges modern student quality paints are nothing like as bad as they were when I started um, painting right okay next lot shut that away and we'll look at the next one I'll look at is this one. I actually bought this palette. It's the same palette that Charles Evans uses. Um, it's a Holbein palette made out of tin. That is years old. And um, that's what I used to keep my Charles Evans paints in at one time. What I've done, and this is what I tried to put on the beginning of a video the other day with um, with no real success what I've done is I've this is my all-in palette if I'm not sure what I'm going to be painting I'll use this in this I've got my four main um, my four main inspirations for want of a better word and they are Ron Ranson, Charles Evans, David Usher and Lois Davidson who's not Dave's son obviously because she's a girl. Um, those four people are the ones that I try to emulate. Dave and Lois if they ever watch this will become very embarrassed but it's true. Right, okay, the way this palette works is down here I've got the Ron Ransom palette. I've got my Lemon Yellow, I've got my Raw Sienna, my Alizarin. My, no, that's not my Alizarin. That's my Umber. That's my Light Red. That's my Alizarin. That's my ultramarine and that's my Payne's Grey. So those seven colours, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colours are the Ron Ransom palette. Okay. Now mixed in with this I've got my Charles Evans paints which are, as I said on the other one, ultramarine blue The, uh, the the burnt umber, the hooker's green, the, I'll come to those two afterwards, the sand, the yellow ochre, 
and the raw sienna. So that's Charles Evans bit. Charles Evans also sometimes, well there's the cobalt and he occasionally for very summery skies will use cerulean which is there. So I put that one in as well. So that's, we've got basically over here and that one's in the wrong place but I'm not going to waste all the paint moving it. Um, <coughs> we've got the Ron Ransom palette, we've got the Charles Evans palette. Um, Dave Usher uses almost purely the Ron Ransom palette but he does have a flirtation with cadmium yellow which I love as well so that cadmium yellow sometimes comes in to brighten things up a bit that's my tribute to Dave for want of a better thing now one of the things that Lois taught me watching her videos is to forget about yes limit the limit your palette always limit your palette or you'll end up with mud but what Lois taught me is you can change the colours in it and having a limited palette doesn't need to mean it's dowdy. So what I've done because of her is I've added lots of brighter colours as well. I've got um, dioxazine violet which is there which I love. I've got cadmium red I've got transparent orange I've got a real in I've got um, no I've got Indian yellow there and I've got a real in there and I've got my cadmium there I've also because you can go the other way and do lots of almost monochrome work so I've also got in here down this end once I get past the Payne's Grey, I've got indigo, I've got my neutral tint green shade, I've got a translucent grey, I've got the sandstone and then I've got Charlie's Hooker's Green at the end. Um, well, I've also got an olive green in there, um, which if you mix the olive green and the translucent you can get some really beautiful deep ivy colors for landscapes and things so that's me all in one if i'm not sure what i'm going to do needs charging and here is my general purpose one which again starts off with it's a smaller version or a bigger version with a bigger mixing area of the palette that I've just shown you but with different things in it and there is the Ron Ransom palette up there there's me green shade neutral tint there's the Charlie colors down that side and there's the Loisy colors down that side so that is this is a wonderful palette. I had it as a present from my friend Liz, who is wonderful. She gave it to me because I liked it, and it's as silly as, as simple as that. What's good about it is I tend to use big brushes, and more of that later. But with this palette, you've got lots of room to get your big brushes in and get your paint out. So that's that. I, I can even use hakes easily to get stuff out of that, and you just pull it straight onto there. It's a lovely palette to use, it's brilliant. Right, so that's basically all my palettes. Just one more. I should have opened this before, it's an absolute nightmare to open. There we go. there this is Cotman paints it's exactly the same paints as I've got in my big paint there except that these 
are pan colours as opposed to tube colours and basically in the factory they squeeze out the tubes and put them there and they go hard unlike I reactivate stuff there when you're using these you just reactivate them now problem with these is I always forget what order they're in and so I have to mix them up. there's a lot of luck involved um, I did put them all they've all got if you take them out they've all got somewhere under there if you can see it they've all got the name of the paint on it now I did sort them all out take them all out put them all in in the order that I wanted and then promptly dropped the box so that they all went flying all over the floor I think there's still one missing somewhere um, but basically I only use these sometimes if I'm going out although I've got a little version of this as well but I tend to use these when I'm doing line and wash which means I'll do an ink drawing and then I can with these I can make nice delicate thin washes you've got in some ways when it comes to thin paint you've got it's easier to control because you don't have a big soggy lump so there you go that's the way I do that and I use them for as I say line and wash mainly okay so that's my palettes now I'll be good if you ever want to see a messy palette have a look at one of Charlie Evans's um, uh, videos right okay um, what I'm going to do is show you the brushes that I use um, first of all I'm going to get one jar which I forgot to bring across there we go you have my pretty jug to look at right okay um, put those over there out the way now Ron Ranson brushes basically are Hakes or Hake if you want to be posh they're Japanese brushes they're very soft pliable and um, they hold a tremendous amount of water they're tricky to use and I'll be honest I am not the best person in the world when it comes to using hakes or hakes because I don't practice enough I tend to just slap things on but um, they are wonderful they're very versatile I will do some um, examples of how all these brushes are used afterwards but there's them that's an old-fashioned one very old one and they're all Ron Ranson Hakes you can get cheaper ones but the best ones are the Ron Ranson range from ProArt because he set the standard of design okay in this pot I've got my squirrel mop And there we go these are as the title suggests made out of squirrel hair that one I didn't wash properly naughty me and it's got a bit of a lump on the end but I do abuse my brushes terribly but these little brushes come to a superb point as you can see um, 
and yet they hold a tremendous amount of water that's how they are spread out it looks like a makeup brush there but if you soggy it it comes to that sort of a point beautiful brushes I love those those are pro art as well um, pro art pretty good brushes now my favorite 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 set of brushes are my um, Stratford and York's now you can't buy these anymore unfortunately but they are superb brushes they are again squirrel but these I don't know how old they are they were second hand when I got them and they just come to that sort of shape and from being huge and you can get a vast amount of paint in those and they you can paint tiny little lines with them without trying so that's those I've got two that one's called an extra large and that one's called a large this one is just a sort of not quite as good but it's still a lovely squirrel flat with a pointy end and this one is another of the Stratford and Yorks and that is um, a half inch flat which I use you can see hopefully how flat it does come at the end really sharp chisel as I say I've no idea how old that brush is um, but it's not new they've been out of business for years I've also got others there's another Daler and Rowdy now that's a mixture I forgot to say that these Hake Hake brushes are made out of either goat or pony hair no ponies or goats were hurt um, and that is a Dale Rowney squirrel and goat hair mix which is also it's very good for doing big areas quickly doesn't come to quite the same point but it's um it's not bad at all I use that for skies quite a lot this one I just love the shape of it it's called a sword liner and it's by the from the SAA I've never really got the hang of using it because you've got to be really delicate but you can do lovely Japanesey things with that by you know just touching and then putting more pressure onto it to just tiny touch and then you can make big marks and small marks and it's takes a lot of use but that's what I do I've also got a sort of used to be a Chinese calligraphy brush again that's pony hair um, that's donkey's years old I got that when I was about 20 so that's had a lot of hammer but it still works I use it mainly really abusing it by bashing it and then using it for foliage and stuff like that it's um it's seen me through many times that there we go so that's the squirrels and the mops and now we come to the Charlie set Charlie Evans's set which are the other set of brushes that I use excuse my armpit Charlie uses Charles Evans uses four brushes he uses a one and a half inch wash brush I've had that a while and it's had some hammer but it just it brings back a three-quarter inch wash brush 
again that comes to a perfect point. Ron uses one of them as well, as well as the Hakes. And a number eight Aquafine. And the one that one's seen better days, it doesn't come to quite as good a point as it used to. So I tend to use my Cotman number eight, which has got a point like a needle. So that's two number eight rounds. And the one that most of the, the other one that we use is a number three rigger. Move that to one side. Number three rigger, if you can see that, is really tiny and that's brilliant for doing twigs and stuff like that. So there are the others. And when I'm feeling posh, I use my um, sable round brushes, my proper sable brushes. I'll get the rest while I'm at it. I should have prepared better. That's always the story of my life. Oops. Sorry about that. That was me falling over the... Um, tripod. Okay, the reason I went away was to show you this one, which is my bestest brush. That is a Red Kalinsky Sable Rosemary & Co. number 12, size 22. No, series 22, size 12. And saw how big and fluffy it was. That's the point that it comes to with just one flick. That was a present from my dearly beloved wife for my 65th wed wedding anniversary. Uh, no, not wedding anniversary, my 65th birthday. And it cost her an arm and a leg. We didn't eat for a month. Then I've got some other good SAA sables. I like using sable rounds sometimes. I like to be able to have the choice to use the sables if I want to. You've got some like that big one, which you've got very long handles. Some that have got shorter handles. Some that have got fat, chunky handles. That's another one. That's the. That's another twelve. That one's from the SAA. Not quite as expensive, but I mean these big brushes. You only need that one brush, and you can do anything with it, from the finest point to the biggest wash. So we've got all of them. There, there, and the other one. The one I'm going to rave about to you because I think this is probably the best buy I ever made. This range, I'm under no obligation whatsoever to the SAA. But this is their imitation sable range number four rigger, which is a superb brush. Now, I bought three of those. Um... One to use for watercolour, one to use for acrylics, one to use for oils. That is the same one. I've used it for everything. Um, and look at it. It just comes back as good as new. It's not the oldest brush I've had. I've had that for about six months. And I've got two more still in their polythene, unopened. But, and that one has been used, as I say, for... It's been used with oil paint, it's been used with gouache, <coughs> it's been used with um, acrylics and it's been used with watercolour. Same brush. You can run it over with a truck and it still stays the same. So there you go. That's my equipment and what I'll be doing um, at some point, now I've got set up sorted, 
is I'll be showing you how to make different marks with different brushes okay so thank you very much for watching hope I didn't bore you too much and nighty nighty